help digestion because I wouldn't want to just make it seem like, you know, it's a band-aid or like a cover-all for whatever digestive problem might be underlying. So obviously, I'm saying this because this is here, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I'm not diagnosing anything, but um, from my experience, and I've uh, tried to wrap my brain around it, why some people can seem to be able to eat all kinds of foods with no problem whatsoever, as, or at least it seems like that, they can just eat everything, and why some people can't um, or have a problem with it. And so I then came to the conclusion that why stop trying to figure that out? <laughs> um, because it just would frustrate me. And, um, you know, we can't really see what's going on inside of our own body. And I guess just like every plant, every animal, everything on this earth has a different diet. I think just like each person really should have a different diet too. So finding what foods um, are good for you are important really important um i think they're like i think a lot of maybe tradition or i don't know if it's american culture but for instance like i think the the dutch or people steeped in a lot of tradition they have traditional foods that um everybody eats at every meal and you have to have them and um, like I remember when my husband, him and I, like when we were first married, it was like too weird to him. Like, well, I don't want to, <laughs> you know, like if we had a different taste, like, well, you just eat what's at the table, you know, everybody just eats everything that you're served and, you know, you don't have a different opinion. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and I've talked to some women who are in the Amish community in this area and um, there's like a, a circle of women who are trying to eat differently and health, healthfully and, and, you know, not the traditional Amish food, which is honestly hard in the digestion. And when they go to church service, they, um, often are like met with this resistance, like you, you know, this is what we eat, you know, mm -hmm. but they've, they've had some easing up on that. So I think that part of it is that also whatever they do to the food, and I, without getting like too into conspiracy theory, whatever they've done to our food supply, um, I think has created a lot of allergies for people mm -hmm. that if we were eating the food in its natural state, or like, let's say wheat, for instance, if we were eating ancient wheat, that was grown in like really great soil without chemicals, mm -hmm. would we have ever had a problem? But now that we've had the wheat that's GMO'd and sprayed and has mold and all this stuff, now our body gets this allergy and now all wheat is a problem. So I think a lot of it is like this. In other countries that it's still yeah. grown very traditionally, like having the Italian girls at my house and yeah. ha having their mom send me food I just last night had Italian made in Italy pasta mm -hmm. and I did not react to it. And if you ask anyone in my family, like I don't eat gluten without reacting. So I ate two bowls of pasta because mm -hmm. I didn't react. Wow. Because um, it's just grown differently. I always wondered that. I thought, like, if I, because I don't eat gluten either. Um, I thought if I went to Italy or if I went somewhere and I had like homemade sourdough from their country, I'm like, I bet I could eat it. <laughs> the bread and everything. Yeah. yeah. There's a restaurant not too far from here um, and I can eat their bread because they import their wheat. Oh, really? So it's the only place I can eat bread at a restaurant. Which restaurant is that? <sighs> when you think of it, like it's an Italian it. restaurant in St. Kings Spring. Mm. It starts with an app. We haven't been there in a while. That's why I can't think of it. I'll, I'll let you know. But yeah, that's the only bread I can eat. Wow. 
That's interesting. Once you mill the grain too, it starts to die. So like, mm -hmm. if you're eating flour that's been sitting on a shelf for three months and there's no nutrition in it whatsoever, it's completely void of nutrition. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. that's part of the problem too. Yeah, I started doing that with the, um, just like the flax seeds. Yeah. Like it, years ago, I learned, and I was offended because the lady was like, "You shouldn't buy ground flax seed," and I was like, "What?" Mm -hmm. And then I was like, "Oh yeah, that makes sense." <laughs> yeah. So I just, you know, grind my own for whatever recipe I'm doing. And yeah. I'm trying to like, when I do like the, the lentil, whatever, you know, or chickpea, I try and like let it sit so it sprouts a bit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. too. So there's just that bit more nutrition in the thing that like I could go on and on about this topic then the thing that is confounds me is to eat help to be healthy and eat healthy and have these foods like this way it's like impossible with the way we live mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like well what do we do what are we doing wrong what, how many things are we doing wrong because like this past year was one of my big maybe for everyone because we had COVID where we did nothing and then like it seemed like double time or something. It was like crazy. And I didn't cook homemade like I always do. And I did not feel good like I normally do this past year because I did a lot of like getting things out of the freezer that I normally would not do. Um, and even just like, it's been like one week and I made every meal from scratch again and I'm like, I feel so good. Like, so what are we doing? <laughs> you know, what, how, what are we doing? How are we, how are we living? And it's the way we live doesn't support the way, like how we should be preparing foods um, to really sustain and nurture and nourish our bodies. Mm -hmm. So I just like always think about that. People should have less grass and more gardens. Mm -hmm. Less grass. I'm big into homesteading. Yeah. I really try to grow everything I can and get what I can and forage and try to buy my meat. I buy it from Chila from school. Oh, yeah? So I don't oh, buy my beef at a grocery no. store. I don't mm. buy my sausage at a grocery store. I don't buy my bacon at a grocery store. Mm. So need to find a chicken lady. <laughs> <laughs> All mine just, they, a predator got them, so I have to start my flock oh, over no. again. Yeah, something got them. So I have two left in my shed. Oh so. my gosh. How many were taken? Five and the rooster. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and they were all layers too, so oh. I'm pretty upset about that. Oh. Especially the avian flu crisis. Oh, I think eggs are so expensive now. <sighs> Well, uh, Ralph Smart, I don't know if you guys ever listen to him. I listen to him on YouTube. <laughs> uh, he says, why are humans the only species that has to pay to live? Basically, yeah. pay to eat, pay to live in a house, pay for everything. Like, yeah. on true. Earth, we're the only one. Like, God created us first, have dominion over the Earth. But we're, we're like, mm. we work to live. We are, like... Something's not right. <laughs> um, I think we should be homesteading, but I think like that's what we should be doing, like not working our butts off outside, like just to be able to pay all these bills and pay all these taxes and everything. Mm -hmm. So that stress then also I think contributes to digestive issues. Mm -hmm. So moving on from Caraway to coriander, which I just find coriander so interesting because coriander is a seed on um, the cilantro plant, and um, it's part of that um, umbelliferous grouping of plants. Um, Latin name is coriandrum sativum, and um, so a quote here from the one book I have at home, it says the, that's the Mrs. M. Greaves, Grieve. And I can't remember the title of her book. Oh no, I can't look it up. From 1930s, 
She has two volumes, volume one, volume two, but it's funny because she, the author, as an author, it's Mrs. M. Grieve, the way she put her name. Uh, so, so smart, knows so much about plants, but she had this about cilantro. The inhabitants... A modern herbal? Yeah, a modern herbal. Volume one and volume two, thick books, really good books. The inhabitants of Peru are so fond of the taste and smell of this herb that it enters into almost all their dishes and the taste is often objectionable to any but a native. So who likes cilantro? Well, I know you do. Who <laughs> likes cilantro? Love it. Well, I was surprised to read that because um, I know a lot of people who like cilantro. But then I read something else. So the name Coriandrum, that's the Latin name, used by Pliny, is derived from Coros, K-O-R-O-S, which means a bug, in reference to the fetid smell of the leaves. And the weird thing is, every time I grow cilantro, it smells to me like stink bugs. Mm -hmm. yes. A little bit. Mm -hmm. What? Yes. A little bit, yeah. Well, sorry if I put that. And you know what? Stink bug doesn't bother me. Stink bug? I don't, it doesn't, like, I know people that are, like, totally grossed out by the, mm -hmm. the smell of the stink bug. And I'm like, it's just a little bit. But there's people who can't smell, smell, they can't tolerate cilantro either. Like, so my brother in law mm -hmm. cannot, is repulsed by it. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, so I can understand. But the cilantro I buy does not smell like the cilantro in my garden. So I'm like, why is that? Is it yeah, because after right. it's harvest? Does right. it still smell like feet after you harvest it? Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. I was just wondering if they modified it a bit in the modern market so Probably. it didn't have as much of that, that bug smell. Yeah. Because mine smells like bugs, but and I was I like, "That's." <laughs> I'm sure it's really stuff, so. mm -hmm. Smell like if I squish a bug, some of them just smell like chlorophyll, which that's what they eat. The just, bugs. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Not saying stink bugs because I've never actually smelled one. We don't get too many. Now I'm gonna go home to like house. We have had but stink bugs. Yeah. <laughs> we had a very noisy, clumsy one last week, and that was the. <laughs> I was just trying to shuffle him outside, but it, I don't know, and I have, I'd much rather eat fresh cilantro yeah. than the sprinkling, the cilantro, brown cilantro or ground coriander. It just, the fresh stuff tastes better, mm -hmm. and it doesn't, you know, there's usually not a fear of too much, and then it tastes so weird. <laughs> yeah. Like with cardamom and stuff, it's mm. just a little too much, and you, it, it gets weird. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. So I have a, this is not like a this is a simple curry powder. So there could be a lot more spices that you put into this. But um, I found this recipe interesting because it's also in um, that book, the Modern Herbal. And it says here to have the in best ingredients powdered at the druggist into a fine powder and sent home in different papers. Mix them well before the fire. Then put the mixture into a wide mouth bottle and cork well and keep it in a dry place. So that recipe is one ounce ginger, one ounce coriander seed, one ounce cardamom, a quarter ounce cayenne, and three ounces turmeric. Have you guys made curry powder? Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've made it with more, more than that. Yeah. Now, um, this jar is, um, I have put some of my coriander seeds in here. If you want to try coriander seeds. Sorry, that's my thing. 